So now at this latter end of this lecture on development, what we're going to be now focusing on is the other process besides gastrulation that was mentioned in the overview of this lecture. And that process was organogenesis. And this is going to be in the context of human development as we've just con concluded human gastrulation. Now it's time to do the next logical step which, be, which would involve organogenesis. So again, to recap, we are starting with a gastrula, which was the result of gastrulation of a blastocyst that has three embryonic layers. But that's all it has. It doesn't have any structures. It doesn't have any tissue, set major groups of cells or organs. So that's what we're going to be doing throughout the next couple of flowcharts. So now, organogenesis. Basic idea behind this is that we're doing organ formation. So this is organ formation while increasing the embryo size. That's another thing to state. While increasing. So the embryo is certainly getting larger during this process because it's forming organs. Increasing embryo size. Okay, so let's look at a basic example of this. There are many different forms of organogenesis, many different examples of it, and I think a really good one to focus on is the process of neurulation. So the example we're going to ground our understanding of organogenesis on is something called neurulation. This is something that happens in every single growing embryo, growing organism within the female womb. And let's look at the processes associated with the birth of the nervous system in an in, in entire sort of a broad scheme known as neurulation. So let's begin on the side here. What's going to happen initially is the following. Cells from the dorsal mesoderm are going to form something. Cells from dorsal mesoderm, that's our location right now, form what is known as the notochord. They form the notochord. So this is going to be a critical initial structure of this neurulation process. The notochord, if you remember from animal development, is a flexible longitudinal rod in the developing embryo. Flexible, it's a longitudinal, it goes up and down, longitudinal rod, and this is going to give rise to essentially the internal skeleton of the embryo. And if you can already understand, you are basically creating organs, right? Because this internal skeleton will house organs. It, is, it itself is an organ system of bones, etc. And so it's important to understand here that we're beginning this process from a very rudimentary structure known as the notochord. So how do we get more specific? This is a very generalized understanding of organogenesis. We get more specific by utilizing specific processes, and that would be something like induction. So induction is a term we've used before in our study of biology thus far, and induction, just to remind you, is when we have the following scenario. Induction involves the process when certain cells are going to or will stimulate or in other words, I'll say slash influence, stimulate slash influence, differentiation of neighboring cells, differentiation of close by neighboring cells. And that's basically what induction means. You're going to have this stimulation and influence by certain cells on close by other cells. And remember what we mean by differentiation. In organogenesis, in development as a whole, differentiation just means becoming more specific. The cells that are being induced as a process of induction are becoming specialized cells. And if you're becoming specialized cells, you have the capability of forming specialized tissue and specialized tissue forms, specialized organs which create systems as a whole, and that's organogenesis in a nutshell. nutshell. So that's basically what we're doing here with this induction process. So let's put this definition in the context of the notochord. So let's take a look here. How does induction involve itself there? The developing notochord that we've highlighted already, that structure, that initial structure, is going to induce the neighboring overlying ectoderm. Induce the close by, the neighboring 
overlying, so it's all around it, ectoderm region. So we have notochord, certain cells of the notochord will stimulate and influence the differentiation of neighboring cells of the ectoderm. How is this going to happen? What is the stimulation and the influence that it causes? It causes the ectoderm, the notochord induction, is going to cause the ectoderm to thicken. So the ectoderm thickens and then forms a structure that's important here. Forms what is known as the neural plate. It's a big step in overall neurulation as a method of organogenesis. And that's going to be our next point of study. So we understand induction and how it's been applied. Let's take a look at the neural plate and understand what that means in this overall scheme of organogenesis in the context of neurulation. What is the neural plate? The neural plate can be considered the embryonic region that becomes the nervous system. So now we're making a big jump here that becomes the nervous system as a whole. So this is a very important system. It houses the brain and neurons and nerves of the entire body. And this is all going to come from the neural plate. But how is it going to come from the neural plate? Specifically what we notice during organogenesis is that the neural plate rolls up. It, in, it gets this involution in, within it to form a neural tube forms what is known as the neural tube. Whenever you have, let's say, a sheet of paper and you're rolling up the paper, you're going to form a tube, right? And that's going to be essentially what's happening with this neural plate. Initially, you have this plane that's going to be called the neural plate that folds, involutes, and it's going to create a neural tube. The neural tube, therefore, then, if you have this let's say piece of paper analogy in your head and you formed the tube from the piece of paper as a result of rolling up you've created a hollow area in the middle there's nothing that's filling that in the same thing happens in human organogenesis of the neural tube because this neural tube eventually is going to result in the creation of something quite familiar to you hopefully it creates a dorsal hollow hopefully you know where i'm going with this nerve cord that is omnipresent and seen throughout chordates in chordates so remember how we said we create that's one of the rules of being a chordate it's a chordate characteristic a dorsal hollow nerve cord where is that coming from well it's obviously a part of the nervous system as a result of the neural plate rolling up creating this neural tube that's our dorsal hollow nerve cord that gives us that chordate characteristic so now we're at the neural tube let's get and let's look at this idea in even more detail this structure now even more so the neural tube, we're going to continue making an organ where this neural tube is what's going to be the direct structure in the embryo that develops into the CNS, the central nervous system specifically, in which you're going to have the anterior part of it, the anterior portion, which is the portion that's at the top of it, at the forefront. It's going to undergo a process that we remember called cephalization, in which you're going to have this large brain structure begin to develop at the anterior portion of the neural tube through cephalization. What about the other side? What about everything else? The remainder of the tube, the non-anterior portion, therefore, also grows and develops and that's more generally going to develop into the spinal cord. The central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord, two central structures to the nervous system as a whole, and that's how we create those two organs, right? Organogenesis. Now, final thing to note about neurulation, this is actually a common point in which birth defects may be involved in the organogenesis and thus the development of the fetus. Here, what we call these birth defects as a result of neurulation defects are more generally, or more specifically actually, neural tube defects. And examples include things like encephaly and also spina bifida. These are two sort of opposite things that happen. Encephaly is when the neur neural tube fails to fuse at the anterior end 
and essentially because of this failed fusion at the anterior portion, you're not going to have a forebrain. So there's no forebrain development. That's really, really bad for the organism. And in contrast, spina bifida is when the neural tube fails to fuse at the posterior end. Both of these are usually a result of it specifically a result of folic acid deficiency. So due to folic acid deficiency. This is a uh, nutrient that comes from the diet. In most Western and established nations, uh, modernized nations, let's say, diets, uh, therefore, they're going to be pretty much completely full of folic acid necessary, uh, enough folic acid for most people to develop normally. But in more third world nations and countries where there's less access to food, um, lots of uh, hunger stricken people, that's where we have the folic acid deficiencies that result in these major, major neural tube defects and thus major birth defects as a whole. So that's just something to keep in mind that folic acid is a specific uh, thing that's going to govern the process of neurulation in great detail. And that covers our look at organogenesis in the context of neurulation. So you can see this is our stepwise look at the process of creating an organ in an organ system. Uh, we're going to now be moving forward with organogenesis and looking at some different ways that organs may also form as well.